Uh, there are one or two waverers at the back who still give it a go on a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, but you take my point. But there's going to be other areas where this might be of concern. You're talking thousands of people. Um, but in principle, do you like the idea of the app? Uh, there are supporters of it. Alexander is in York. How are you doing, Alexander? I'm good, thank you. Good. How's everything? Yeah, good at this end. So you're 18. Um, I'm telling you, are you, you're not jabbed yet, or are you? Some 18-year-olds are. I have had my first jab, and I'm waiting for my next jab, which is next week. Right. You said that like you're excited about it. I, I am excited to get vaccinated. We should all be excited to be vaccinated. Okay. What it means is we can get our freedom back if we are. Does it not bother you, the basic kind of premise, yes, you get your, you have to have a government-sanctioned injection to be free? That's like something out of a horror flick. No, I mean, I, I don't think so. So, so we, for me, I went on holiday somewhere. I had to get vaccinated to go there. It isn't a particularly big issue. Mm -hmm. This is about our broader societal responsibility. We can only end the pandemic if we are vaccinated. And if we're not vaccinated, then the pandemic will remain around. My personal liberty to go to a nightclub does not supersede someone else's liberty to be alive. That's the fundamental basis there. So, I mean, so, I, I hear what you're saying, but some might say that you're talking that that's quite an extreme example. I mean, after all, you can be jabbed and still have COVID and still pass it on, albeit in a you know, less severe form, as we understand it. But you could still do so. Yeah. So if we see what happens is hospitalizations risen by, I think it was 42 percent in the past week. Death has risen by 40 percent. COVID cases, 40 percent as well. And there is a possibility that the hospital system could relieve increasing pressure, even, even if not like overwhelmed, mm. will still be less likely to handle the pandemic. And where it can't handle the pandemic well, yeah. it fails to handle other aspects well. In so no, I, I, I get that. And in many respects, that is the more palatable, palatable argument for lots of people that actually we don't want to overwhelm the health service. So therefore, that would be as far as some are concerned, the best reason to, to get the jab so that you keep people out of hospital and keep the hospitals available to, 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 to treat other people. Well, well, for me, it's not about the health service. It's about the people who use the health service and the people who need the health service. So for me, my father's asthmatic. So I will not be going to a nightclub out of my own choice until I am double vaccinated, until I know mm. that nightclubs are safe for everyone. And the same point that I put to Connor, Alexander, you know, uh, and also to our, our Danish uh, guest, uh, is there, I mean, some people are sensing that this, this will be about more than just a COVID passport. Your driving license will be on there, your national insurance details, possibly ultimately your, your taxation. I mean, everything like a massive Uber ID card, if you like. Would that bother you? That would not bother me. If you look at what we have in Estonia, well, what they have in Estonia even, um, they have a very successful digital government program where you can pay your taxes on an app, you can register to vote on an app. What that does is it is in integrated sort of digital culture that has really improved their society by using data for the public good. Don't get me wrong, there are privacy problems, but fundamentally we can integrate data into our lives without it being a major problem and when are you planning your first night out to a club when does that jab come next week you say my first jab comes next week yes so i was thinking i would ha go to a nightclub before i went off to university so probably That's... late august right maybe september and where are you going to university at science po paris in france you go to paris Wow, yeah. that that's so you've really gone for it there. Well, it's good because Macron won't even look at you unless you've been double jabbed. So that's a good so yeah. you're, you're going to be in, in, in good company there. What, what are you studying in Paris, Alexander? Politics and government. Why Paris? Uh, where it's a, it's a fantastic university. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's where all of the previous presidents of France went. So this is so your grand is plan, is it, to be the first English president of France? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the Hundred Years War's revenge, clearly. Yeah, no, listen, I'm supporting you now. I hear where you're coming from. I like this. You, you, you're hatching plans. Um, <laughs> against, I will see you in the Champs-Élysées. I will be there cheering you on in 20 years' time as you take the oath of office. Alexander, thank you. It's great to speak with you. Alexander Bowen, who's for COVID passports. Well, you heard him outline his argument there. It's a no-brainer as far as he's concerned and all that goes with it as well if it gets used for other stuff. The digital world, he cited Estonia as a, a, a digital um, era, place, people, government, system as a good example of efficiency. Uh, you might want to depart from his view. Either way, you know where to find us. 0344 499 1000. It's quarter to two. Online.